Welcome to the Black Mage 1 to 100 leveling skills guide. I'll be going over all of your skills as you train to actually enjoy Dawn Trail Black Mage better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this to this. All right, I get it fine. You've all become pictomances. All right, I, I, I I'm not. <laughs> Love Black Mage. Black Mage is f***ing awesome. This is a beginner-focused series aimed to help those new to Final Fantasy XIV, the MMO genre, or still just need a little help. In that same vein, this will be focused on your actions and how to use them. We'll not be going deep into optimization, instead focused on the general play and giving general opening rotations. We will go through these together in order to help new players understand the process. If you wish to push your play further, there are further places you could research the job. The goal here is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. Tooltips are broken up by expansion and that expansion's level cap. So level 50 for A Realm Reborn, 60 for Heavensward, 70 for Stormblood, 80 for Shadowbringers, 90 for Endwalker, and our final level cap of 100 in Dawn Trail. I recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the General tab of the Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build? It'll make sense at 100. Just put your skills on your hotbar so that you are comfortable as you play. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on the how and why I set up my UI, check the description for a video about it. Finally, keep in mind that this is an active MMO. Patches can and will change jobs. Check the description for a quick overview of each patch's changes or special notes. With all that out of the way, please support me in whatever way you can, check my links below, and let's begin. Black Mage is a DPS job that acts like a turret, moving little and launching giant explosions. You do have movement tools in order to be able to do mechanics and still blow up your enemy, but mostly minimize movement. Your main mechanic is swapping back and forth between ice and fire, using spells of the same element. You throw in a little bit of lightning, but most of what you want to be doing is making things burn while using ice to restore MP. To play a Thaumaturge, you either start as one or pick the class up in the Old Aw Thaumaturge Guild after completion of your level 10 class quest as your first class. Let's get into the finer details of each skill. Level 1 and Level 2, Blizzard, Fire, and Aspect Mastery. These seem like very similar skills, but aren't. Both have a 2.5 second cast time and a 2.5 second recast time. Both do 180 potency of damage. Blizzard costs 400 MP, while Fire costs 800. The main difference is the bonus effect. Blizzard grants Umbral Ice, Fire grants Astral Fire, and they remove the opposite buff. This is where Aspect Mastery comes in. Most Fire and Ice spells will grant you Astral Fire or Umbral Ice. You can have one stack of it, and it lasts for 15 seconds. The similarities end here. Astral Fire will boost the damage of Fire-based spells by 40%, Weaken Ice Spells by 10% and removes your ability to gain MP. Umbral Ice will regen 2500 MP, 25% 25 of your max, every time an Ice Spell hits enemies, and reduces the power of Fire by 10%. Despite the wording of this skill, both buffs will reduce Ice Spell cost to zero, though Umbral Ice will reduce all Elemental Spell costs to zero. This includes Fire costs, where Fire is doubled in Astral Fire. This dictates the entire playstyle of Black Mage, Ice is for being an MP battery, while Fire is where your damage comes from. As a result, we're going to want to swap back and forth between elements. Empty your MP bar with Fire, to then refill it with Ice. Most of your Fire and Ice skills through all your levels are going to also fall into granting or refreshing these buffs. Further, this is the Elemental Gauge. This is going to have no less than five different features tied to it by a level cap. You may wish to go into HUD layout and potentially use the Simple Mode. Try it, but I actually find this thing easier to understand. Could be due to me using it for many years now. Anyway, while our usual rotation will always be alternating fire and ice based on our MP bar, the mechanics of how we do so will be established, then later changed. Level 4, Transpose. This is an ability, which means you can use it between any major spells, also called weaving. It has a recast time of 5 seconds and no cast time. This takes any Astral Fire or Umbral Ice you have and turns it into one stack of the opposite element. Without Transpose, attempting to swap elements was likely not working well. This is how we swap between elements properly. When you're out of MP for Fire, hit Transpose to start spamming Blizzard. 
When you hit max MP, forecast of blizzard, transpose back into fire. Another use of this is in dungeons between groups of enemies. Killing everything doesn't mean you have to just wait for the next battle to hit buttons again. If a battle ends with you in astral fire, transpose into umbral ice to start your MP regen. You won't regen much, but if you ran out of MP, you'll at least have enough to use ice spells. Level 6, Thunder. This is an odd one. This is an instant cast spell with a 2.5 second recast. However, you can't use it. In order to gain access to Thunder, you must gain Astral Fire or Umbral Ice. Swapping between them also counts. This will grant you Thunderhead for 30 seconds, giving you one cast of Thunder. Thunder itself is a dot, a damage over time. It deals 100 potency of damage to the target, then deals 45 potency of damage for 24 seconds. Dots work on a server tick, doing damage every 3 seconds. Divide the length of the dot by 3 to get how many times the damage will be dealt. So 45 potency, 8 times. In total, this is 460 potency of damage, if you get the full duration. Generally, only put thunder on enemies you think will live long enough to get most of the duration. If enemies are dying fast, you may just want to skip it. On bosses, let the full duration run before you refresh the debuff. Another use for this is for movement. This activates the GCD like any normal spell. If you have to move to dodge some kind of enemy attack, you can't cast and move. Thunder's lack of a cast time means you can attack on the move, if only once. Refreshing the dot early can be worth it in those cases, but this becomes less worth it later on as we get better movement tools. At level 8 we have our first roll action, Addle. These skills are extremely good and extremely important. Fit them on your hotbars, but I will not be going over these. If you want an overview of your roll actions, there's a video in the corner and in the description for your viewing. We also have Sleep at level 10. Level 12, Blizzard 2. This is our first AoE, Area of Effect Attack. This has a long 3 second cast time, longer than the normal 2.5 second recast. It costs 800 MP without a buff. It does 80 potency of damage to your target and all enemies within 5 yams of the original target. On 3 enemies this is 240 potency, but only slightly stronger than Blizzard. Keep in mind that Blizzard 2 has a slower cast time, making it effectively weaker than its noted potency. This is something that may trip you up for why some skills are better than others. For now, keep that number in mind. Blizzard 2 is better to use in any situation where you will hit 3 or more enemies. Early on you may not experience it, but wall to wall pulling tanks are the norm. This means a lot of running on your end. While running, you can spam transpose to throw thunder at each enemy. Once the tank stops running, plant yourself and start using AoE attacks. At level 14 we have the roll action Lucid Dreaming. Level 15, Scathe. This is a class quest skill. You can't use it or even reasonably talk about it without doing your quests. Do them, as this isn't the only skill locked by quests. This will however be the only time I will verbally mention it. At the top left is the denotion of this quest lock, and will appear for every skill that is locked by quests. As for Scathe, it's bad. It has an instant cast time, 2.5 recast, and costs 800 MP. It does 100 potency of damage to a target, with a 20% chance to do 200 potency. On average, it's two-thirds the power of Blizzard. The only good part is that it has no cast time. Part of learning to become a good black mage is learning how to move and cast at the same time, or not need to move at all. Techniques like slide casting and using your other instant cast options instead of scathe. If you absolutely have no other options to continue attacking, use scathe. So I won't say to just leave it off your bars, but try your best to use everything else in your toolkit before considering scathe. Some damage is better than no damage, but turret mage is your goal. At level 18, we have the roll action, Swift Cast. Level 18, Fire 2. Much like Blizzard 2, this is our fire AoE. 3 second cast time and costs 1500 MP, which during Astral Fire is a 3000 MP cost. Due to this high cost, you won't get to cast it many times before needing to go back to ice. Generally, keep in mind the same 3 or more enemy rule. If you can hit 3 or more enemies with your AoE, use that instead of your single target attacks. Level 20, Maim and Mend. This is a simple 10% power boost to all damage you do and HP you heal. This really isn't a power boost though, more just how things are meant to be. Level 20, 
Aspect Mastery 2. We can now stack two levels of Astral Fire and Umbral Ice. Astral Fire at two stacks will boost fire damage by 60%. Umbral Ice at two stacks will have ice spells restore 5,000 MP per use, 50% of your max. This means less time spent in ice. Further, the damage reduction to the opposite element spells will be 20% at two stacks. Things are still going to play the same for now. Level 26, Thunder 2. This is our AoE version of Thunder. It does 60 potency to your target and all enemies within 5 yams of it. The dot is 30 potency for 18 seconds, or a 180 potency dot. In total, that is 240 potency per enemy for the full duration. This may be surprising, but this is stronger than Thunder on two or more enemies. The shorter dot timer means you get the full power faster, but also need to refresh it often. Also remember the strategy I mentioned in Thunder. During wall-to-wall -wall pulls and running with the tank, you can spam transpose to get free Thunder casts. You're very likely to hit at least two enemies with Thunder too, even with how enemies move in such situations. Free and good damage. Another note is that you cannot stack both Thunders. Whichever is cast most recently is the only one that will be applied. If you have multiple black mages in the party, each player gets one thunder slot, so you won't overwrite each other's dot. Level 30, Mana Ward. Mana Ward is a defensive ability. On a 2 minute cooldown, this gives you a shield for 20 seconds. That is worth 30% of your max HP. You're a squishy little mage, so 30% extra health for blocking a hit or two is huge. Solo, this is good, but it's even better in party content. Bosses will almost all do some sort of unavoidable damage after a point. Mana Ward to reduce the damage. Avoidable damage you're not able to dodge for some reason? Mana Ward. The only issue is trying to use it when it is needed most. You only get it once in a while, so knowing where best to use this per fight is a skill you will likely need to develop in high-end content. To obtain the Black Mage job, you must first reach level 30 and complete the level 30 Thaumaturge quest. Additionally, complete the main scenario quest, Self-Management, which is at level 20 in the story. Return to the guild, and the quest should be there for you. Level 30, Mana Font. This is a 2 minute long cooldown, but is insanely strong. This will fully restore all your MP. This effect alone is enough, but there's more. This will refresh the Astral Fire timer, or just outright grant you Astral Fire 3, which is a lie. We can't get Astral Fire 3, only Astral Fire 2. But I mean, it refreshes the timer regardless. This is a very important effect much later. Finally, it gives us Thunderhead, even if we were already under Astral Fire. After running out of MP, hit Manathon to get a second round of fire spells. It's simple, but really strong. Level 35, Aspect Mastery 3. This is the most important level up for Black Mage. We can now have three stacks of Umbral Ice and Astral Fire. Astral Fire 3 is an 80% damage boost and reduces the cast time of Ice Spells by half. Umbral Ice 3 has any Ice Spell fully replenish your MP while also cutting Fire cast times in half. Our AoE gets an even further boost on top of this. Fire 2 and Blizzard 2 will grant Astral Fire 3 and Umbral Ice 3 respectively, without the removal of the previous buff. We've had to transpose between the two elements before. Now you can go right from Umbral Ice 3 to Astral Fire 3 with a full tank of MP. Plus the speed boost effect makes swapping between elements a 1.5 second cast time instead. Also, uh, that part of Mana Font is true now. Anyway, let's see our other level 35 gifts. Level 35, Fire 3 and Blizzard 3. On a really long 3.5 second cast time, both of these will do 280 potency of damage to a target and grant their respective elements tier 3 buff. Blizzard 3 costs 800 MP and Fire 3 costs 2000 MP. But remember, Umbro Ice reduces MP costs to zero. More importantly, this is our way to swap elements now. Transpose still has its uses, like that wall-to-wall -wall trick I taught, and even gets used in specific rotations. Generally though, this is our single target way to change elements. With the speed effect of tier 3 buffs, the cast time of these is also, functionally, 1.75 seconds instead of the scary 3.5. It's only when you are starting off that the cast time is that long. That and when using it under the same element, such as Fire 3 under Astral Fire. This is a bad idea both because of the cast time and the MP cost. 
4,000 MP for an attack that isn't even stronger? Longer cast time means the higher power isn't so high. For now, this is just for swapping elements. Plus, at the start of the fight, you can use these to get right to the tier 3 buff, which you can maintain for the entire rest of the encounter. We're not done, though. Level 35, Umbral Soul. This is a much later skill that has been reduced in level to make Black Mage play way smoother through the entire leveling process. This is an instant cast spell that can only be used while under Umbral Ice. This will restore MP based on your Umbral Ice stacks and give you one additional stack like Blizzard, but will also pause the Umbral Ice timer. Rather than continuing to tick down, the timer pauses and you can just leave it. So in the middle of combat with a boss that leaves the arena, you'd normally lose your stacks without spamming Transpose. Now you can go to Ice and hit Umbral Soul up to three times depending on if you ran out of MP during fire or not. A very unlikely situation is also needing to move while your timer is about to run out. Can Umbral Soul to refresh the timer, pause it, and cast while moving technically. If a battle ends, you can get into Umbral Ice and hit Umbral Soul just once. Outside of combat, you will go straight to Umbral Ice 3 and restore all MP. Your timer will be paused until the next time you go into Astral Fire, or die. This is an extremely important thing to get used to doing, as maintaining Astral Fire and Umbral Ice uptime is going to be very powerful. This is a good time to formally go over rotations. The thing about Black Mage is your rotation changes constantly. We'll be attempting to slowly build toward the currently accepted opener. We'll stick with Fire First openers here. Why? We prioritize putting out big damage from the very beginning. Our fire phase is going to get even longer with time, and starting in fire will align with party buffs. Afterwards, we can do our normal rotation. In dungeons, we'll be able to start every boss with Umbral Ice 3, making our opening fire phase even better. Pre-pull, fire 3. Thunder. Fire, 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 fire. Manifont. Fire, 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 thunder. Fire, 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 blizzard three, blizzard, fire three, continue into base rotation. Let me note this pre-pull section. The problem with this is tanks have no patience and do not use countdowns, even in difficult raids. The goal is to line up the cast time with a countdown timer or just expecting the tank to pull during the cast at best. In most cases, you'll just have to do the cast after the pull has already begun. You want to finish the cast as soon as possible, but sometimes you just gotta roll with it. And don't worry, despite mid-rotation Fire 3 being free, the cost for the opener is worth it. After our Fire 3, we put up Thunder as soon as possible to let the timer roll. Then just spam Fire. We mana font after we run out of MP, giving us Thunderhead and a full MP bar. This Thunder is used as the first one is running out. From there, we just empty our MP, swap to Ice for regaining our MP, then back to fire. Until our next mana font, we just do our base rotation. Blizzard for MP, fire 3, and 6 fires. You'll notice that thunder is not listed in your normal rotation. This is because the length of your rotation and the length of your dot will naturally drift apart. When you use thunder within the rotation will change as you continue to fight. Make sure you're refreshing thunder anytime it is running out. Let's mention the AoE rotation quick. You just spam Blizzard 2 and Fire 2. Remember you can apply Thunder 2 on the run. Throw in a mana font when you can for extra Fire 2. At level 50 is when we'll go over this properly. Level 40, Maimon Mend 2. This time it's a 30% increase in power, a 20% increase over Maimon Mend 1. It's an intended part of ARR balancing. You're not going to be dealing with this in any active way. Level 40, Freeze. Freeze has a 2.8 second cast time and can only be used under Umbral Ice. It does 120 potency to the target and all enemies within 5 yarms. Essentially, this is a better version of Blizzard 2. Consider how in AoE you need to cast Blizzard 2 twice every element change. Once to go from fire to ice, and then again to restore your MP. Freeze is both faster and stronger, while also restoring your MP. Blizzard 2 is now relegated to only swapping from fire to ice, or as your first cast to get your buffs running. Level 42, Fire Starter. Your fire rotation is now very luck-based, 
Every time you cast fire, there is a 40% chance you get a proc of fire starter. When you have fire starter, you may cast fire three for free and with no cast time. You want to spend these every time you get them, since instant cast and free negates both downsides of fire three. If you are in a bad position when you get a fire starter, use the free instant cast to also move. You may not want to ever move, but you need to move. Using what movement tools you have is extremely important, but don't hold your fire starters just for movement. This is a big part of your damage for the next section of levels. It might not be guaranteed, but 40% is a pretty high chance. At level 44 is the final roll action, sure cast. Level 45, Thunder Mastery and Thunder 3. This is a much improved version of Thunder. The initial hit is 120 potency with a 50 potency dot for 27 seconds. In total, the full duration makes this a 570 potency hit. This makes Thunder 2 only worthwhile on three or more enemies, at least on paper. If it's worth using Blizzard 2 and Fire 2, it remains better to Thunder 2. Level 50, Ethereal Manipulation. On a very short 10 second cooldown and having a 25 yom range, you can teleport to an ally. It's not instant, but very quick. What movement tools you currently have are single casts at a time, and that really bad scathe attack. You can slide cast, but that's also limited in a few ways. Ethereal Manipulation is your large movement answer. If you need to travel half the arena in a single instant, target the player across the arena and zoom away. You can even use it while the tank pulls enemies to keep up. Sneak in a cheeky Blizzard 2 to get started, then Ethereal Manipulation to the tank who's running to the next group. The biggest issue is those other players. They might not be in good positions for you to Ethereal Manipulation. A mistake you make can also be a mistake, say, the tank makes. An expert tank will likely always be safe to teleport to, but not every tank is a perfect machine. And just because you have the ability to teleport now, doesn't mean you're allowed to stand far away from the party. Stay closer than you think. Or do you not want any heals? Level 50, Flare. With a 4 second cast time and costing all MP, this does 240 potency to a target and 168 potency to all enemies within 5 yams of the initial target. Because it's fire based, it gets the buff from Astral Fire. This is your finisher for fire AoE phases. While it says all MP, you only need 800 MP to cast it. So in your normal rotation, 3 fire 2s brings you down to 1000 MP, leaving enough for Flare. Then Manavant will let you do it again. Always end your fire AoEs with Flare. Do not use this in single target at all. Extremely slow cast time and not that high a base potency. You would need to swift cast for it to even come close. So let's go over an AoE opener and also say it's not that simple. I've mentioned multiple times that wall to wall pulls allow you for doing some weird tricks with transpose. This opener assumes you are starting from Umbral Ice. The first Fire 2 will swap you from Ice to Fire, then three Fire 2 casts spend your MP. Swift cast just so Flare doesn't take forever into Mana Font for getting a second round of Fire if needed. Unfortunately, you can't swift cast every use of Flare, but sometimes it's better than none. Then we just do the base rotation for AoE. Blizzard 2, Freeze, 4 Fire 2s, Flare, and Repeat. For a final note not shown here, you can buy some ethers. Pop any ether that restores 800 MP or more after your second Flare, and you can get a third Flare. Ultimately though, AoE is a lot more freeform than single target can be. How much the tank will pull, how well they position, how quick they pull everything. Let's say enemies are going to die mid fire phase. You can skip one or more fire twos to go right to flare for a faster kill time. There's a lot more factors to keep in mind moment to moment. In single target, you work around mechanics, but try not to deviate too much. So remember, this is more a guideline than a hardline rotation. That covers our A Realm Reborn toolkit. Hopefully you have a handle on things and understand Black Mage up to this point. This era of Black Mage is far easier to understand and manage, but that doesn't mean our coming skills won't be a challenge. Level 52, Ley Lines. On a two minute cooldown, this places a circle on the ground. While standing anywhere inside of it, all of your spells have 15% lower cast and recast times. The circle will remain on the ground for 30 seconds. This makes you even more a turret mage than you already were. You do not want to leave your ley lines if you can help it. But sometimes AoEs just can't help but target you and be bigger than your ley lines. 
You can slightly reduce how often this happens by standing to the side of your ley lines. When it comes to harder content, you'll learn where and when to place your ley lines. Memorizing every boss's patterns is one thing, but farming extremes or learning savage, you'll be learning how to place the ley lines properly. Otherwise, use this on cooldown. Start your rotation, throw it down, and throw fire even faster than before. Use it on bosses and trash mobs both. Just make sure the encounter will last long enough to make use of ley lines. Level 56, Enochian. This is a passive buff that activates any time you have Astral Fire or Umbral Ice active. I've already tried to impart how important it is to maintain your buff no matter what, but an extra 5% passive damage should add to that too. Level 58, Umbral Heart, and Blizzard 4. Freeze, Mana Font, and Umbral Soul have been given a further boost. Freeze will give us 3 Umbral Hearts in a single cast. Mana Font will give us 3 as well. Umbral Soul will give us 3 when used outside of combat, but only 1 per cast inside of combat. Our new skill Blizzard 4 will also give 3 hearts. Blizzard 4 has a cast and recast time of 2.5 seconds. This does 320 potency to a single enemy, essentially replacing Blizzard. The issue is that Blizzard 4 does not refresh Umbral Ice or grant us stacks if we somehow do not have 3. The fact this is only usable under Umbral Ice never comes into play. If for whatever reason you're going to drop Umbral Ice, you'll still need to cast Blizzard or Umbral Soul. But normally, we don't spend that long in Umbral Ice. So, good skill and all, what is the point of Umbral Hearts? Umbral Hearts negate the cost of Astral Fire. Fire spells will retain their normal cost, each cast spending one heart. Since you can get up to three hearts, that's three casts that have the normal cost. This will give us a seventh fire cast every fire phase, and have some MP left over. This leftover MP is going to be used in 14 levels. For now, don't worry about it. Umbral Soul, the uses of the skill are all the same. Now we just have a bonus of hearts. So going into a boss fight from a trash mob, you can go in with full MP and three hearts for a big opener. When it comes to AoE, we're already using freeze every ice phase, so we'll get free Umbral Hearts. Umbral Hearts will reduce the cost of our Fire 2s, but also our Flare cost, which is always all. With Umbral Hearts, Flare is still very expensive and will eat all of your Umbral Hearts. So we spend two on Fire 2, spend the last heart on Flare, and get a second Flare. Mana Font, and then you can do two more Fire 2 casts, two more Flares, and then Aether for another Flare. This maximizes the effect of our hearts while getting out as many Flares as possible. This gives us our AoE rotation up to level 99. Until our final skill, the following is our AoE rotation. Again, this is the rotation, not the opener. You'd still plop down ley lines, use mana font, and do all the weird Thunder 2 stuff while running in a wall-to-wall -wall pool. On three or more enemies, this is what we want to do. Keep Thunder 2 up if the enemies are actually living long enough. We will be getting more useful AoE skills as we level, but this base rotation doesn't change. Be sure to check out when I mention AoE uses of skills because you can integrate them into your overall rotation. Again, while this base rotation doesn't change, AoE is a lot more freeform than single target can be with moment-to-moment -moment changes in situation. Level 60, Fire 4. With a 2.8 second cast time and costing 800 MP, this does 320 potency of damage to a target. And because it's fire, Astral Fire buffs it to over 570 potency. Similarly to Blizzard 4, you can only use this while Astral Fire is active. Also like Blizzard 4, this does not refresh your Astral Fire buff. If all you do is use Fire 4, you will drop Astral Fire. Despite how much stronger this is, we can't replace Fire entirely. We will need Fire purely for maintaining Astral Fire. Consider that thanks to Umbral Hearts, we now get 7 Fire Casts, and Fire 4 is the same cost. 3 Fire 4s, Fire, and then 3 more Fire 4s. We make use of all 7 Casts, and maintain Astral Fire. Then of course, Mana Font. Let me also say though, it does not need to be sets of 3. If you have Ley Lines running, you can easily fit in 4 casts of Fire 4 before casting Fire. Absolutely zero spell speed on your gear, and Ley Lines isn't running, you are probably going to max out at 3 in a row. Luckily, Black Mage does like a bit of spell speed. 
All of this consideration is put into our level 60 opener. We're still doing fire first because by now some jobs are going to have party buffs. We want to make sure we use as many fire spells under these buffs as we can get. Again, pre-pull means to cast to try and hit the moment the tank pulls. We'll use Thunder 3 immediately for the dot, but also because the instant cast means we have weaving space. Pop ley lines down so we can cast our fire spells good and fast. From there, it's just what we already know. We need a fire to keep astral fire going, so we do two sets of two fire fours. The Thunder 3 here is also right as the dot falls off. Refresh it, and then back to fire spam. Run out again, and we go into our basic rotation. Umbral hearts, six fire four casts, and keep thunder running. It plays pretty smooth, if still very turrety. Remember to use your movement tools as needed. Stormblood is going to give us some amazing movement tools, and an important attack. Level 62, Between the Lines. On a tiny 3 second cooldown, this transports you to the center of your ley lines from within 25 yams away. That's the same distance ethereal manipulation can take you. Because of this, if your ley lines gets targeted by some AoE, you can ethereal manipulation to another player, then between the lines back to it when the coast is clear. The obvious issue is that this has no use at all when ley lines is on cooldown. With no ley lines down, you're stuck with only ethereal manipulation which is still a lot of potential movement. Just make sure whatever AoE is hitting your ley lines doesn't leave behind a puddle. Teleporting back into ley lines is going to get you hurt anyway. Level 64, Thunder Mastery 2, and Thunder 4. Just like Thunder 3, this improves Thunder 2. Thunder 4 does 80 potency to all enemies hit and gives a 35 potency dot for 21 seconds. That's 245 potency and a total 325 potency for the full duration. This brings Thunder 4 back to being a gain on two enemies. If there's two enemies, it's better to use this over Thunder 3. Level 66, Triple Cast. This is a skill with charges. Rather than a single use, you have two uses. It takes 60 seconds to gain a charge, and this time it counts down the moment you use a single charge. In total, it takes two minutes to gain both charges back. Each use of Triple Cast gives you the ability to cast three spells with no cast time. If a spell already doesn't have a cast time, it will not spend the uses. That's why you have 15 seconds, since something like Thunder, you'll still want to use during Triple Cast. Stuff like Fire 4 and especially Flare have such long cast times compared to the other spells. Sure, Fire 2 is 3 seconds, but Flare is 4 seconds. And if we want to do Flare, Flare, Ether, Flare, that's 12 seconds of cast time. Triple cast removes the cast time, making us have only 7.5 seconds of recast time. That's a lot faster. And while Fire 4 is barely a longer cast time, that short amount of time adds up quickly, especially when we consider openers and how those often have very little leeway at the top end. Another extremely important use for this is movement. Black Mage might use triple cast for openers, but they might just entirely ignore the skill for periods at a time because they will need it later. Mechanics are getting more complex, the amount of movement required is going up, and you need to be able to handle it. A turret can't handle it, but triple cast can. Combine this with ethereal manipulation and between the lines, and Black Mage can be surprisingly mobile. Level 70, Enhanced Enochian. Enochian is now with 10% damage up, Shirt, sure, whatever. More importantly is this new part of your gauge. That bottom right portion was actually a timer that slowly fills when under Astral Fire and Umbral Ice. Every 30 seconds, this diamond will be filled. This is Polyglot and a very strong part of your toolkit. Be forewarned, if your Polyglot is already filled when the timer next ticks over, you will lose the Polyglot you would have gained. The timer doesn't pause for you to spend what you get. Plus, if you drop Astral Fire or Umbral Ice, the timer resets. You shouldn't be letting it drop anyway. We've been training for this. Umbral Soul is now also even stronger. After battle, you can transpose to Ice, hit Umbral Soul, and your Polyglot timer will continue to run. So make sure to spend your Polyglots on the following skill. Level 70, Foul. With a 2.5 second cast time, it costs Polyglot to use. So once every 30 seconds on average, we want to fit in one use of Foul. 
It does 600 potency of damage and 240 potency to all enemies within 5 yarms of the initial target. That's slightly stronger than even a Fire 4 on even just one enemy. In AoE, it's as strong as Flare's base power, but applies to every additional enemy. As long as you are using polyglot stacks and not overcapping on them, use whenever you can. If it's not going to cause you to drop Astral Fire, feel free to fit it in. Or wait for Umbral Ice where you have a ton of free time. The only real reason you'd save Polyglot is to hold for AoE. 600 potency on one enemy, or being able to hit 6 enemies. But because of travel time from bosses to the next trash pack, you probably shouldn't save it. The timer will tick over before the tank finishes the wall to wall pool. Let's quick talk openness here. In AoE, you're likely going to get a polyglot stack while running with the tank. You can also use triple cast to make it open and go faster. Mainly though, I want to do one here to introduce a concept. These triple casts are kind of just thrown in here for getting use out of them. You can count on no movement that you need them for, or you're so good at slide casting you don't need them yet. Something players tend not to understand is why we use both ley lines and triple cast. Because their effects are different. Ley lines reduces cast and recast times. Swift cast and triple cast remove all cast time. Ultimately, the speed of your rotation comes down to your recast timer. If you're taking longer to cast skills than your recast, you're going slower than your maximum possible speed. If you are taking the same or less time to cast than your recast, you are going to be throttled by your recast timer. Ley lines will reduce Flare to a 3.4 second cast time with a 2.12 second recast time. Using triple cast will reduce the cast time to zero, but the recast time will be 2.5 seconds. Using both at the same time increases your maximum possible speed while making sure your cast times don't get in the way of that. They aren't a contradiction to use together, they actually further buff each other. Again, you may not end up using triple cast here depending on the fight. Sometimes you don't got a choice if you want to keep your rotation going, but it's not a mistake for both skills to be used at the same time. Also notice I did not include Foul, even though you'll get a Polyglot. The issue is you only will get this Polyglot after party buffs would have worn off, so at most you can fit it in while under Ley Lines, when Ley Lines is better spent on those longer spells like Fire 4, using speed for speedy reasons. Foul's cast times aren't as slow, getting less benefit. Stormblood's toolkit really carries on the movement end, while Shadowbringers is going to carry the rotational aspects. Level 72, Despair. This is our single target version of Flare, but only taking 3 seconds to cast. It costs all available MP, needing at least 800. It does 350 potency to a single target. It grants Astral Fire 3 as well, so unlike Fire 4, it acts as a refresh. This is an important feature. Just like with Flare, we use this as a finisher move for our single target fire phase. So 6 fire 4s, a fire in the middle to keep the timer running, and then end on Despair. Then while we're on 0 MP, Blizzard 3 is still free to cast. Level 74, Enhanced Enochian 2. Enhanced Enochian is now a 15% damage boost under Astral Fire and Umbral Ice. Maim and Mend of the Black Mage generation. Level 80, Enhanced Polyglot and Enhanced Foul. These two traits aren't entirely tied together, but are close enough. Enhanced Polyglot allows you to stack two Polyglots. You can still overcap by trying to store three at once, but it takes a minute for that to even start to be a worry. Enhanced Foul, meanwhile, turns Foul into an instant cast spell. This makes Foul infinitely more usable and flexible. Even with triple cast, our movement abilities are limited. We try to use those in our opener too. Being able to store two Fouls means we have just a bit more guaranteed movement when we need it. However, it's a movement tool only for during AoE because we got a third skill. Level 80, Xenoglossy. Simply, Xenoglossy is our single target version of Foul. It does a massive 880 potency to a target. It only costs one of your Polyglot, grants you a GCD of movement since this too is instant cast, and is just overly strong. A strategy you can use is to always have a Polyglot stored. If you get to two Polyglot, use one of them. 
keeping the other one always available for movement, be it so you can weave ethereal manipulation without clipping, normal sideways movement to dodge a small AoE, or whatever. Using them the moment you get them is very tempting, I know, but the movement capabilities are just as strong as the damage it does aside from maybe in openers. Despair is a very important part of how our opener works, as is Xenoglossy, but the reason for that one won't come until level 86. For now, it's just replacing Foul. We're starting to see rotations with very little leeway. If you have no spell speed on your gear, you're probably seeing that timer get down to 2 seconds. It's not falling off, so it's okay, but you may understand what this means for higher level openers. We removed that one cast of fire and replaced it with Despair, because we would not be able to cast Despair otherwise. We would have 0 MP. From there, it's just hitting Mana Font and doing things as normal. Refresh Thunder when it falls off, use Xenoglossy when you need movement or just whenever. Same as with Foul in the previous opener. You won't get Polyglot until after party buffs will have worn off. Our normal rotation got a bit longer, and we have a new movement tool that is extremely powerful. Moving into Endwalker, we'll be seeing some very simple, but very game-changing additions. Level 82, Aspect Mastery 4, High Fire 2, and High Blizzard 2. High Fire 2 and High Blizzard 2 are just potency boost, small ones. These are 100 potency each. The animations are cool though. Level 84, Enhanced Mana Font. Very simple, reduces Mana Font to a 100 second cooldown. This seems like a very small reduction. This will help you align it with your rotation much more easily. This especially is important for trying to align with reopeners every two minutes. Because of just how long our fire phase is, it can start before the party is doing a burst phase and end after the burst phase is already over. That 20 second difference is huge as a result. Level 86, Enhanced Enochian 3. 25% bonus. Level 86, Amplifier. On a 2 minute cooldown, this grants us a stack of Polyglot. It can only be used when under Umbral Ice or Astral Fire, which basically is only before starting a fight. This is an extra use of Foul or Xenoglossy every 2 minutes. We're gonna make use of this for openers, which everyone does every 2 minutes anyway. Make sure you're spending your Polyglot stack so using Amplifier doesn't grant you… well, nothing. And waiting to use Amplifier for a better time usually isn't a thing. You should be making the most of this. Level 90, Aspect Mastery 5, and Paradox. This is both weird and strong. Our compass thingy has gotten yet another new element attached. This is the Paradox Marker. To gain Paradox, you do everything we've already been doing. Swapping between Umbral Ice and Astral Fire while at 3 stacks is what gains you 1 Paradox. When going from Umbral Ice to Astral Fire specifically, you also need to have your three Umbral Hearts. When you have Paradox, Blizzard and Fire will turn into it, forcing you to use it instead of those base spells. There is no reason you wouldn't want to use Paradox. It is 500 potency, way stronger than Blizzard and Fire, and refreshes your Astral or Umbral timer. In both cases, it is also an instant cast spell, meaning a movement tool too. When under Umbral Ice, it is free to cast. When under Astral Fire, it has a cost of 1600 MP that is not affected by Umbral Hearts. It will always cost 1600 MP, but because it replaces Fire anyway, this does not disrupt our rotation. The part I consider most important is the other Fire bonus. It is a guaranteed chance at Fire Starter. Remember how I mentioned using Fire Starter in every chance you get it? and then I've never mentioned it again because of it being random? It's no longer random. Both Paradox and Firestarter are instant cast refreshes to Astral Fire. You can move them around as needed to ensure you get 6 Fire Forecasts out while also keeping on the move. For example, Fire 3, 2 Fire 4s, Paradox, 2 Fire 4s, Firestarter, 2 Fire 4s, Despair. The instant cast nature also means we can weave something in after fire starter, such as going despair, fire starter, mana font, which mana font will also grant us a paradox marker. Paradox is always worth using, basically no matter what. 
it's just too strong to ignore, at least in single target. In AoE, completely ignore Paradox. It only replaces Fire and Blizzard for a reason. We've been getting one or two elements from every expansion since Heavensward that changes up our opener, but we've been waiting for these levels in specific for a big change to our rotation. Pre-pull, Fire 3, Thunder 3, Swift Cast, Amplifier, Fire 4, Fire 4, Xenoglossy, Triple Cast, Ley Lines, Fire 4, Fire 4, Despair, Mana Font, Triple Cast, Fire 4, Fire 4, Fire 4, Thunder 3, Paradox, Fire 4, Fire 4, Fire 4, Despair, Base Rotation. Well, that's a big change. Let's go through them all. First off, Amplifier comes out in the weaving slot we have with Thunder 3. These two Fire 4s get the shaft while we wait for everyone to put up party buffs. Xenoglossy will spend the Amplifier Polyglot, both being major buffed by the party and giving us lots of weaving space for triple cast and ley lines. Ley lines has been moved late just because we have a lot of big, long to cast skills. The triple cast is also perfectly timed for us to be able to despair for the third and final instant cast, giving us space for mana font and another triple cast. From here is as we know it. Thunder 3 when the dot falls off, Paradox to refresh the timer, and go back into ice when we're out of juice. The absolute most important note though, is that we need spell speed. The currently accepted Black Mage opener requires at minimum a 2.45 GCD. If you still struggle to do the opener, dropping Astral Fire or such, get a bit more spell speed. If your gear doesn't have any spell speed, it's time to get melding. It's not the most complex opener, but its own brand of unique. It's filled with power and comes with a lot of available movement if you won't need to hold the triple casts until later. You just need to be ready to change up your opener completely for if you do need the triple casts later. But we have one last expansion to go through, and the power of Black Mage will hit its peak. Level 92, Thunder Mastery 3, High Thunder, and High Thunder 2. These are yet further power boosts to Thunder 3 and 4 respectively. High Thunder is a 150 potency hit with a 60 potency dot for 30 seconds. That is a 600 potency dot and total 750 potency. Pretty high there. High Thunder 2 is a 100 potency hit with a 40 potency dot for 24 seconds. The full dot is 320 potency and the total potency is 420. This maintains the Thunder 2 being stronger on two or more enemies. But by now, almost every tank will be doing wall to wall, pulling big groups for you to get far more power out of this. Maybe we'll see a two enemy raid boss or some Alliance trash mobs. Level 96, Enhanced Ley Lines and Retrace. Ley Lines will now turn into Retrace upon using it. You can also set it to be its own button only via the skills menu. Retrace has a 40 second cooldown, meaning you get one use of it every time you use Ley Lines. This will replace your Ley Lines at your new location, but will not reset the timer. That keeps running. This is purely for if you need to move the Ley Lines. Sometimes you might place it in a part of a boss arena that gets made unsafe, or you get a mechanic you need to move for. You can move your Ley Lines to a new safe position and keep using it. Did the boss drop an AoE that left behind a puddle? Move your Ley Lines. It's no longer possible to lose your Ley Lines. Well, assuming you don't somehow place it bad twice. Level 96, Enhanced Enochian 4. 30, 3, percent. Level 98, Enhanced Polyglot 2. You can now store up to three uses of Polyglot. That is a very simple bonus, but very useful. The Polyglot timer ticking over, using Amplifier, and already having one stored will cap you out. It takes a lot to overcap now, but it's still possible, since you may need to hold on to a full three stacks for some kind of movement. Dawn Trail stuff is no less movement heavy. Level 100, Enhanced Astral Fire and Flare Star. Before we talk about the effects, let's point out this new Snowflake Gauge. Ironically, this is your Astral Soul Gauge. You need to gain six stacks of Astral Soul to fill it. To gain Astral Soul, you cast Fire 4 and Flare. 
Each Fire 4 will grant you one Astral Soul, with Flare granting three. Remember how our skill rotations have been? Six Fire 4s per Fire Phase, and always ending AoE with two Flares. Once we fill the gauge, we get one cast of Flare Star. It has a 3 second cast time and does 400 potency of fire damage to our target. This is also a 5 yarm AoE, dealing 140 potency of damage to every target hit. Oh, that's a bit disappointing. Even Flare is better than that. Guess because of how Black Mage's AoE is at 100, they didn't want them to be too good in AoE. Generally though, this is still a very strong attack. It has a really cool animation, and it makes sense to encourage what is the intended Black Mage rotation. You get an extra big blast at the end as a reward. Black Mage is all about big booms, and what more do you need than just throwing an explosion at your enemy? Also, leaving Astral Fire will lose you any stacks of Astral Soul, so ending fire early will lose you that Flare Star. So now we can get into our final opener, rounding out our rotation with some power boosts and a huge explosion. Our opener will be the best it can be. Our only addition is that Flare Star. It takes our final triple cast hit, maximizing how much time is saved by triple cast. It's not really a big change for the rotation overall, but truly makes use of every little interaction. The only weird bit is how we're going to end up finishing the fire phase with extra Astral Soul stacks that just get sent away. It's inevitable in the context of the opener, since we're ultimately trying to abuse party buffs. If we have a party that has absolutely no party buffs, it could actually be better to do some form of Ice First opener. Though, don't quote me on that. I'm not mathing that out. Don't forget you're going to need to have at least a little bit of spell speed to properly do this opener. At least a 2.45 GCD, maybe more depending on your latency. Our normal rotation for Black Mage will go as follows now. We have the Ice Phase and the Fire Phase. Fill in High Thunder when the timer runs out and be sure to use Xenoglossy when not needing to save it for movement. So now I'm going to do a karaoke opener with it. A karaoke opener is where I go through the opener while saying the names of the skills in time with them being used. This will help you internalize how fast or slow an opener feels. In the case of Black Mage, keep in mind if you have more spell speed than me. It might be just slightly faster. My GCD will be roughly 2.4. Pre-pull? Fire 3. High Thunder, Swift Cast, Amplifier, Fire 4, Fire 4, Xenoglossy, Triple Cast, Ley Lines, Fire 4, Fire 4, Despair, Manifont, Triple Cast, Fire 4, Fire 4, Flare Star, Fire 4, High Thunder, Paradox, Fire 4, Fire 4, Fire 4, Despair, then onto our base rotation. Let's quick show off the rotation of AoE. At the moment, High Fire 2 and High Blizzard 2 kinda suck. Yes, they're better than the old skills, but with how Flare Star is, it ends up being worth skipping the High Fire 2s. Don't forget we also have the ability to use Foul with every Polyglot stack. As for an AoE opener, here's what we do. It's basically the same as what we've had, with all the same reasonings as with single target stuff. Aim to cut cast times down, use all of our tools, and the same weird trick while running wall to wall. Black Mage remains a high skill job that aims to turret. We have cool rotations and the ability to move as needed. Plus, the cool new ability to move our ley lines at the absolute wrong time and fall flat on our faces. Thank you for watching this Black Mage 1 to 100 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators. You can also come watch me on Twitch or even go follow my Patreon. The links in the description will take you where you need to. Have fun in your adventures across Toral, and may the power of Anne and Hogs lay waste to your enemies.